different truck from the last time I talked to you guys, but still with the Diamondback bed cover. And I've kind of gotten to the point where if I have a truck without a Diamondback, I feel like it's half as capable than it is with. And this isn't a sponsored video. Diamondback doesn't pay me. I guess I'm just a fanboy. There is, however, one limitation to the Diamondback that doesn't work for my use case. And you know what? Let me set this up on a tripod and I'll just show you. One of the primary ways I use my Diamondback cover is to haul lumber, and mostly 4x8 sheets of plywood. And for the most part, it does that pretty well, but there are some difficulties. And I'm going to use this smaller sheet of ply just to show you what I mean. The first thing you got to get over is the front latch. And once you get the plywood over that front latch, you push, 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 and you get to this first series of hinges. And you got to kind of muscle it over that series of hinges, start pushing again, then you hit the second series of hinges. Then once you muscle it over that, you push it further back until you hit the back latch. And this works fine. Sometimes it tears up the bottom sheet of plywood, and it's not really all that practical or convenient. What I need is a nice, flat, sturdy surface on top of all this so that I can more easily push plywood and other lumber up. And there's two ways to go about this. One is store-bought, one is a little bit more fabricated. And I'm going to show you both today. So, let's get started. A warning from the National Weather Service will follow shortly. By the time you hear the next pop, the funk shall be within you. This is the front runner bed rack for Diamondback covers. It consists of a set of rails that mount to the bed cover, allowing any number of load bars to be added across those rails. This all comes incredibly well packaged from Australia, I think? In any case, the first step is to pick out the mounting tracks and get them arranged on the Diamondback cover in a way that makes sense for your application. And a quick note here, I'm using the tracks that came with the front runner for Diamondback kit. But if you don't want to buy the entire kit and plan on building your own rack, you can get Universal Track from FrontRunner and cut it to whatever length you may need. But anyway, the first thing to understand when laying out your tracks is that the Diamondback cover is not a rectangle. It's more of a trapezoidal shape that gets wider as you move from the tailgate side to the cab side. This makes laying out your tracks a little more difficult, because it is important to keep the tracks not only in line with each other from front to back, but also parallel to each other from side to side. I started by focusing on the tailgate panel. I first cut a piece of half-inch plywood to a length that matched the distance I wanted between the two tracks. I then used this as a jig to keep the two tracks parallel to each other. Once I was absolutely certain the tracks were laid out where I wanted them, I used a center punch and lightly transferred marks onto the diamond back to mark my mounting holes. From there, I just drilled pilot holes and followed those with finishing holes, allowing me to temporarily bolt down the tracks. Now it was time to move on to the cab side panel. I used a long and straight length of 8020 as a jig to ensure these tracks stayed in line with those previously mounted. Again, pilot holes, finishing holes, and done. All that was left to do was to remove the tracks and prepare them for final installation. So the next step in the process is to install this rubber seal on the bottom of our tracks. And these rubber seals are actually one of the reasons I went with Front Runner instead of designing my own rails with 8020. It's apparently these are really good and my Diamondback is incredibly weatherproof. I would prefer to keep it that way. But there's double-sided tape on the bottom of the rails, which once you get the backing off, you can install the rubber seal. Come off. So. So all I gotta do, take a razor blade, trim the edges, and this rail's ready to go. With the seals installed and the tracks ready to go, I laid down a bead of silicone around each mounting hole and then bolted the tracks to the diamond back. 
The last step in the process is to simply slide on the front runner load bars and tighten them down. And there you have it. This is just loosely mocked up at the moment, but this is the two bar system from front runner for the Diamondback cover. Uh, store bought, obviously, really, really well made. I guess front runner is sort of famous for their quality, and I can see why. This extrusion is ridiculous. It's thin walled, but man, the detail work on it's beautiful. Uh, things like clearance holes for bolts so you can add accessories and, and things like that. And Front Runner has an ungodly amount of accessories for these load bars. Things from surfboard mounts to shovel mounts to things like that. And I think a lot of Overland guys use these to mount tents and other camping equipment. And it's they're, they're insanely popular. I don't Overland though. Uh, I don't even camp. I'd rather work than sleep outside. But this is pretty cool. It's just not exactly what I need to haul a bunch of lumber. For one, it's a little high off the deck. And two, there's nothing to stop it, my lumber from hitting the windshield or fly off the back. It's cool, but I don't think it's gonna work for me. What I want is something lower and more slat so I can secure more things. And so, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these off and start on my own system. This is the front runner foot that comes in the Diamondback kit. It stands about seven inches tall. And as I mentioned, I want this whole rack to be lower. So for my foundation, I'm gonna use another front runner part, which is a small foot. I'm not sure of the original application, but some sort of a roof rack. And it stands, oh, about two inches tall. So I lose about five inches, and that should be just about right for where I want to be. But this is going to be my foundation, so yeah, let's get started. Setting the foundation for my rack is as simple as sliding on the new front runner feet. I used four on each panel for a total of eight, and once they were roughly in place, I installed two quarter inch carriage bolts on each foot that allowed me to slide in and lock down my crossbars. Each panel has two main crossbars that are made from 1030 series 8020. That being said, I wanted more flexibility than these stationary crossbars would allow. So I sat down at the computer and designed some side plates that would bolt to the main crossbars and allow me to add additional bars as needed. Once these plates were designed, I sent the files off to sendcutsend.com where they were laser cut out of quarter inch aluminum plate. About a week later, these showed up. I quickly got to work mocking up the rack and really liked what I saw. But most of what you have seen thus far was shot on Valentine's morning. You might have noticed that I've been fighting a lot of wind noise in my audio. Well, that's because a historical winter storm was headed towards Texas that I was absolutely ignorant to due to my own self-imposed ban on all things news related. Anyway, the storm hit us the next morning, took out power and water for a week, and just generally rocked my life upside down. Thankfully, I was able to drop off the side plates at the powder coaters before the storm, but it would be a few weeks before I got onto this project again. But eventually, life returned to the normal, screwed up version of life we were all used to by now, and I was able to carry on with the project. I started by bolting my freshly powder coated side plates back onto the rack, and then got busy thinking of ways to show off its capability. A lot of Overland guys use Pelican cases for extra storage, and I just happened to have an old beat up one I got off of Craigslist laying around. I figured it would make a pretty good test mount of sorts. So this is the underside of the Pelican case, and it features these ribs, which add strength to the bottom panel, as well as these feet. And these feet get in the way of my 80-20 extrusions when I'm mounting them to the bed rack. So what I need to do is machine off these feet so that I have a nice smooth surface and I can get this thing mounted nice and solid. And I've seen guys do this with the grinder and I was sort of dreading that, but I got an idea and that is place these two nice flat boards on either side of the feet and then use a router with the flat bottom bit. And that should make short work of this, I'm hoping anyways. So. Let's give this a shot and see what happens. So here's the end result. It's not perfect, but I mean, you're never gonna see this. 
and I mean, it's not like I drilled a hole in the thing. I'm going to do that later. <laughs> well, later, after taking some careful measurements and checking them twice, I drilled four quarter inch holes to accept the carriage bolts that I slid into the 8020 crossbars. Then it was just a matter of throwing the case up onto the rack and getting it bolted down. I'm not sure if this is a great idea or not, but I'm going to use these quick thumb screws and just watch them really closely. If they have problems staying tight, I'll just get some lock nuts. It would just be nice to be able to take this thing on and off really easily. Right now I'm using fender washers on the inside. However, I think I'm going to get some aluminum plate just to make sure I don't have any tear out. You know, so I'm never going to put anything heavy in here, but just to be safe. Excuse me. As I was bolting the Pelican down to the rack, I was making fun of myself a bit. It's pretty, well, extra. But if you take a step back and look at it objectively, it actually looks alright. It has kind of a military vibe to it. In fact, my kids now call my truck the Battle Taco. Plus, that little extra weatherproof storage area has been crazy convenient for things like tie-downs and the blankets and chairs we use at our kids' sporting events. I wasn't planning on keeping the case mounted at all, but man, I don't know. In any case, the silly little pelican is all fine and good, but how does this thing manage its real purpose? How does lumber mountain travel? Well, pretty gracefully actually. The rack has right at 5 feet of length, and this provides just enough support to avoid any leverage issues with an 8 foot sheet of ply. So loading is as simple as sliding the sheets up, installing some tie down eyelets, and then strapping it all down. Looking at this footage now, I should probably add a third strap to the mix, but this sheet was tied down well enough that I could move the truck with it. Ultimately though, this bed rack has made the Diamondback much more versatile for the things that I do and haul. Lumber and other building supplies strap on almost as an afterthought now, and the ability to mount other things like pelican cases and surfboards and drones, etc. I'll put it this way, I was worried about moving to the tiny bed on this mid-sized pickup. But this rack, in combination with the Diamondback, has made this truck just as capable as any full-size short bed truck I've ever owned. I have been trying to shoot this video for months. Months! Started with crazy wind, went to the largest winter storm Texas has ever seen, and now, as I've been trying to shoot this closing video, it's rained for a week straight. But, here we are. Finally. I've been using the rack for about a month now, and I'm still loving it. The one thing I've changed since I shot the video was the stock Diamondback has 80 pound struts. I replaced them with 120 pound, and that allows me to you know, have 40 pounds up on the rack and it'll still support its own weight while open. The other thing I was thinking about doing as I shot the video was, let me close this tailgate side. I was going to build some sort of a modular or flip out extension to the tailgate side rack with the idea of supporting a full eight foot sheet um, apply. And I kind of gave up on the idea because with five feet of support, I'm past that leverage area and it doesn't really seem all that critical, honestly. It's super easy to load stuff up there. I mean, if the price of plywood wasn't astronomical right now, I'd have a better idea, but I don't know, maybe once, you know, the, the price of lumber comes down a bit and I'm doing more woodworking and stuff like that, I'll have second thoughts. But as of right now, this thing's sort of a beast at carrying anything I throw up there. I've truly, truly enjoyed it and uh, I hope you guys like the video. And yeah, that's it, man. Catch y'all the next time.